get this. On the left, we have some Postgres queries to create two tables and populate them with some data. Up here, we have some SurrealDB queries to do exactly the same thing. Now, obviously the SurrealDB version is a lot more concise, but it turns out that that's actually just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to SurrealDB. SurrealDB is also written in Rust. If you're not sure why that's valuable, Go ahead and Google Postgres segfault and you'll have your answer. SurrealDB also supports something called TyKV as a persistence layer, so it can scale horizontally to accommodate massive data and traffic volumes. So what kind of database is SurrealDB? Is it a relational database? Is it a key value store? Is it a document database? Is it a graph database? Well, the answer is yes. Quoting the author of SurrealDB himself, he says, SurrealDB is aiming to be at the intersection of relational, document, and graph databases while still remaining simple to use with an SQL-like query language. So yeah, SurrealDB aims to take the best aspects of each major database paradigm and combine them all into one database. Oh, and did I mention it supports REST endpoints and end-user authentication right out of the box? And that it aims to support WebSockets to allow consumers to receive real-time data updates? To say that all of this is ambitious is a bit of an understatement. Let's walk through some of SurrealDB's capabilities and query language. First, let's dive into the examples that we saw in the beginning. SurrealDB has a query language that's very SQL-like, but it's much more concise. Okay, what we're trying to do here is create two tables, one for armor and another for player. And armor has one field called resistance. Player has two fields, one for strength and another for armor. Armor is a reference to the armor table. So in the SQL world, this might be a foreign key. In SurrealDB, this is actually called a record link. The first thing to know about SurrealDB records is that they always have an ID. And an ID consists of two parts that are separated by a colon. The part to the left of the colon is the table name that that record exists in. The part to the right of the colon is the ID of that record that's unique within that table. So in the case of the first record here, it's armor colon plate. So we know this record needs to go into the armor table. And then plate is its unique ID within that table. And it has one field called resistance. And we're using a set clause to set that one field. The other thing to note about SurrealDB is that tables are schema-less by default. So I can set whatever arbitrary fields I want and those fields will get populated. Also the creation of the table itself is implicit in these statements. So by creating the first record in the armor table, it's actually going to create our armor table automatically. Now let's look at the player table, which has a field called armor. In a SQL world, this would probably be a number that refers to the ID of an element in the armor table. But with SurrealDB, we have something called record links, which is actually a direct reference to that foreign table. Record links are the mechanism by which SurrealDB is able to completely eliminate joins. The other thing is, like I mentioned, these queries here as written will create armor and player tables that are schemaless. If we did want to create these as schema full tables because there's some set of fields that we want all of them to have, we need to explicitly define that schema. So we do define table armor schema full, and then we define field resistance on armor and it's going to be of type int. And then that's good enough for the armor table and for the player table we'll do define table player schema full define field strength type int and define field armor on player and that's going to be of type record um, and that's going to point to the armor table. So that's a way of specifying a record link, record in parentheses, and then the target table name. Now we're doing exactly the same thing, but our table has a strict schema. Now let's copy and paste this into the SurrealDB command line application to make sure it works. Okay, let's do a sanity check, select star from player. It looks like that worked. We get some nice JSON output. So these are all the records in the player table. One of the really cool things about SurrealDB's record links is that they make it a lot easier to pull data from multiple tables at once. So if you were doing this in Postgres, you'd have to do a join on two fields in these two different tables. So I need to select all these fields from player joined with armor, where armor.id is equal to player.armor underscore id. And this isn't really that verbose, but it's very common to have to join two tables where a column in each of those tables is equal. Because this pattern is so common, SurrealDB makes the query for this a lot simpler. So we can see if I do select star from player, it gives me the record link or the ID of the record that the armor field references, but it doesn't give me the contents of that armor record. If I wanna pull in the contents of that armor record into the results of this query, I can just do select star from player, fetch armor. 
That's it. Just add a fetch clause to the end and it's going to fetch the contents of the armor table for each record. So we can see instead of just seeing that ID for each armor field, we can see it has the ID and then also the resistance for that armor. This query is quite a bit more concise than that SQL join. SerialDB does have all the core functionality and all the built-in functions that you would expect from a SQL database. For example, it has a where clause. You can do select start from player where strength is greater than 10. So that's player colon Bob. There's also aggregation functions. So if you wanna get the sum of a column for all records in a given table, we can do select math sum strength from player group by all. And so that gives us the sum of the strengths of all the players in the player table. Now let's get into what, in my opinion, is one of the most interesting features of SurrealDB, and that is graph connections. So with the armor field of the player table, we saw one way to have a record reference another record in a different table. But that's really a one-way relationship. What if we want to establish a relationship between two different records that can be queried in either direction? Well, for that, there's graph edges. Imagine if we want to maintain a wants to buy list for each player. So each player has a list of pieces of armor that they want to buy in the future. And these lists can be empty or they can have many items in them. And I want to be able to execute queries like for every player, show me all the armor that they want to buy. Or I can say for a given piece of armor, which players want to buy this piece of armor. So to demo this, first we're going to create a new piece of armor. And then we're going to use relate statements to establish relationships from a player to a piece of armor. So relate player Leroy, and we're going to use this arrow operator, wants to buy. And wants to buy is going to become a new table with these edge connections in it. And then that's going to point to this new dragon armor. So we've established this relationship represented by a record in the wants to buy table with a field called in that references Leroy and an out that references the dragon armor. So now we've said Leroy wants to buy the dragon armor. We're also gonna say Bob wants to buy the dragon armor and the plate armor. So we're gonna do relate. And then Bob wants armor. Okay, so select star from wants by. We typically won't query this table directly. We'll refer to it in our queries of the armor and player tables, as we'll see in a minute. But for diagnostic purposes, we can make sure all the records we expect are there, and they are. So there's three records, one for Leroy, two for Bob. So these are directed edge connections, but they can be queried in both directions. So if I want to list all the players along with the armor that they want to buy, I can do select ID, and then this arrow operator. So all records with a reference to this edge table that we just created uh, wants to buy. And then those records point to something in the armor table. Uh, we're going to call that WTB from player. So we can see all the results from player have this WTB field, and they just have a list of all the pieces of armor that that player wants to buy. So then we can query in the other direction, given a piece of armor, what players want to buy that armor. So for that, we can do select ID, and then this error operator the other direction. Given our edge table, we're gonna to wanna to look at directed connections to the thing that we're gonna mention here. So it wants to buy, and then player, as players from armor dragon. So we're making a query to the armor table for edge connections and wants to buy that originate from the player table. So now we ask specifically about the dragon armor, who wants to buy the dragon armor, and we can see we get a nice list of Leroy and Bob, both want to buy the dragon armor. So this is super powerful. These edge connections allow us to query the relationships that they represent in either direction. There's one more feature we're going to talk about, and that is events. And events are sort of like triggers from a traditional SQL database, but combined with SurrealDB's aim to support WebSockets to give consumers real-time updates, they can be pretty powerful. Let's add another field to the player table called level. I wanted to add another field to the player table called level, but I can't because it's got a strict schema. So I'm gonna go ahead and recreate the table without a strict schema. Okay, I've recreated the table as schema-less. So now we're gonna do update player set 
level equals one. So every player gets, every player starts at level one. Say we want to create a record each time a player gains a level. We can do define event and then the table that we want to store these records in. And then on table, we're going to reference the table that this event will be triggered by. And then the condition that's going to trigger it. So when the previous level is less than the level that it gets set to, then we're going to do this action. We're going to create a new record in the level up table. And it's going to have one field called time, or sorry, two fields. One is going to be time. We're going to set that to the current time. And then the level that they reached is going to be the level that the value was set to. Okay, that worked. And then now we're going to try updating Leroy to be level two. He was previously level one. That worked. Uh, so now let's see what we have in the level up table. Yep, so we have a record for Leroy reaching level two. I think this feature is gonna be really powerful when combined with real-time updates delivered to consumers via WebSockets. So that's a quick overview of some of the features and capabilities of SurrealDB. Let me know in the comments what you think of SurrealDB. Are some of these features interesting to you? Are they gonna help with something that you're working on right now? Or are you just planning to stick with a traditional SQL database or a key value store? Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.